OK, so now we've calculated the actual focal length of the photograph taken in the university, it's time to move inside Maya and create a new camera and import a background image to use as a reference point for match moving. So if we create a new camera, go to Create tab, Camera, this drops down inside the viewport. What we need to do really is to rename this camera so we don't get confused between the projection camera and the default perspective. So if we just call this Camera Projection, OK, and select it to look through. So we'll select camera projection, and we can see that we're now inside the camera view. Because we've already calculated the focal length previously, we know we have to change it from 35 to 39. And we can see the perspective change within the grid. The next thing is we want to import the background image we'll be using as a reference point. So we go to view, image plane, import image and choose the photograph we want. We've now got a background image that we can freely move around and that stays in the same position while we can view, uh, navigate through the camera, camera view. So if we create our first reference object which will just be a simple cube, we need to put a reference point, ideally the base, on the centre of the grid. So if we go to translate and snap the pivot point to the corner by holding down D and V and snapping it to the corner point. And let's put it in a wireframe. Now what we want to do is put this in the center of the grid. So by holding down X, we can now snap the object to the center of the grid. So we have kind of a point exactly on zero, zero. At this stage, it's, it's worth trying to just move the ground so it's it won't be exact, but it's a kind of point of reference so you know roughly where you are. And also, an important, currently this image isn't showing the full resolution. Now we can do this by selecting the film gate, and as we do this, the entire image becomes, um, you can see the entire image. So it's worth having film gate on, otherwise we won't be able to reference everything exactly. So from here, we're now able to scale up the image, scale up the model, and try and align it roughly with a prominent point within the photograph, which I'm choosing as this foreground um, corner. So then we can scale in a different direction, this way, and backwards. So we've got a rough, a rough position of where we want to be. To make it a little, easy, a little bit easier to see what's going on, I'm just going to turn off the film gate so it makes it a bit bigger and then just rotate the camera as best as I can to try and get that corner position as best as possible. Now we've pretty much got like a point of axis of a uh, rotation now. So I'll just jump out the film back into the film gate. And what we need to do is move the pivot point from the center of the grid to the center of this corner point because this will now be the location we're actually going to rotate the camera around to try and match the perspective in the different angles. So select the object, hit W for the move tool, press D and then V to jump into two different views so I can see this from perspective, make it easy to select, so D, V and snap it to the corner. So now if we look back through perspective camera, we can see that the pivot point is now here. And everything will rotate around that point. So the next thing to do is set up a simple camera rig, which will enable the camera to ro rotate around this point without moving the geometry. So that will be the process in the next video.